This film gives us such an amazing personal um, picture of Marina, both as an artist and as a person. And I know that you are now good friends with Marina. Um, but and I know that you said it's a very long story how you came uh, how you came to meet her and um, how the project came about. But I think I do have to ask you to <laughs> tell us that story just because I'm sure it's a very interesting one for the audience. So it was really um, spontaneous. I have had a relation working relationship with the company Show Force and the producer of the film Jeff Dupre for mm, about eight years, and we've done some big series on PBS in the US, one of which was Carrier, which was a 10-hour show where we lived on an aircraft carrier, and it was a mission, a real deployment, Navy deployment to the Persian Gulf, and um, then another one where I lived with a traveling circus for a year. And I just finished that show, uh, the production of that show, when I walked into the office and he told me that he had met this amazing woman the night before at a dinner party. And he told me that he had met Marina. And um, so I knew about her um, because I went to art school and I'd studied her. And uh, so we talked about this meeting he had and how uh, charming he found her. And um, I said, that's that's great. And she, he told me about this new retrospective that was gonna happen. And I think I'd heard a little bit of like a rumor about it. And um, I said, that's that's great, good luck with that. Like I, I don't really have any interest in working on that. <laughs> and um, because you know, I just spent a year trying to convince clowns and acrobats to let me into their trailer. And it was a very, it's a very insular world and it was just really difficult and I felt sort of beaten up and I wanted to take a break. And, um, and then also the fact that it's performance art and it's a challenging genre of art. And um, so I went away for a couple of weeks and was gonna come back into the office to start editing Circus. And he told me that he just discovered that Marina had uh, invited the reperformers up to her house to do cleaning the house, sort of to train them and prepare them for the show. And uh, even though there was no money for the film, would I be interested in going up and, sh you know, since I'm a cinematographer and a director and a producer, would I go up and maybe shoot this and we could f cut a trailer and get some money? And again, I said, well, I don't know if I really want to do this. And he said, look, she's really charming and if nothing else, it'll be fun to hang out with her. So I took him at his word and I went up and um, met her the day before they arrived and she was super charming and we immediately hit it off. But I said to her, you know, look, I'm really skeptical of this. Um, is that okay? And she's like, that's fine, that's great, because, you know, I've been faced with that question my whole life, and and it actually will make for a better film if you're if you're questioning the the validity of this. And I also said, you know, and I told her the story about chasing clowns and acrobats around, and she's and I said I can't, I don't know if I could spend any more time doing that, chasing you around. And she was like, don't worry, I'm gonna give you keys to my apartment. And so within a week, she gave me keys to her apartment, and no subject has ever done that. And so I to totally took advantage of it, mm -hmm. and I would let myself in, into her apartment and put the camera in her face before she woke up, mm -hmm. just to sort of test her. And she, uh, she was unfazed by that. I mean, she was annoyed, but she was unfazed <laughs> by it. And. Um, <laughs> You know, so I, I kind of tested her out, and, and it, it it was amazing because she was fearless. She gave me total control of my of the film, of my film, and she um, trusted me. And you know, I spent twelve months financing the film on my own, just sort of out of my bank account, and you know, and then with show a bit of show of forces money. And so she really trusted that we were going to somehow finish the film and get it sold. And you know, we talked about HBO, like that would be amazing. Wouldn't it be amazing if it was on HBO? And um, that was just a dream. And then you know, they did actually end up buying it. So in the end, and we could and uh, giving us enough money to edit it, and then we got into Sundance. And so it's just sort of been all this. Um, it's been this incredible ride, but uh, it just started out with um, mm. mutual trust, mm. you know, and faith really, mm. and her fearlessness that mm. I wasn't going to. You know, I didn't set out to, uh, to dismantle her myth, but I told her that, you know, look, if I find out that this, some of this is invalid or you've been sort of creating this myth about your story, like, I'm gonna go, mm. I'm gonna tell that. Mm. And, um, and I, you know, I worked quite hard, actually. I went to Naples at one point and interviewed the guy who hosted Rhythm Zero in 1974 and asked him, like, did, did someone really put a gun to her head and did, you know, did someone try to pull the trigger and did someone try to kill her? Because every essay I'd read about that, it was different in every essay. And so I was like, what's the, what's the truth here? And, uh, you know, he couldn't really, his memory was just as sort of shaky as hers in a way. 
And so what I realized in the end was that none of that really mattered. You know, what matters is that I witnessed the artist as present. It was powerful performance. I was, I was transformed. People were transformed. And so I needed to tell that film. We all needed to tell that film. And, and that's what we made the film about. Yeah. No, it is stunning because I'm always interested being someone from a film background, but also having knowing a tiny bit about art, is the, the, the difference between, or maybe there isn't, between you as the filmmaker selecting what you're showing of Marina um, and her almost kind of performing her everyday life for you as part of the film. Can you separate her real life from her performed life? And the role of Klaus as the curator of this huge show um, again, about kind of selection and collaboration, because both projects, the film and the exhibition, are surely about that selection, collaboration, and performance. Do you see them in parallel, or do you see them very differently? I, we absolutely cur curated her life, mm -hmm. and we curated the show. It's a subjective film. It's our perspective. It's my editor, my producer, and my perspective having t been in that room with her, because you know it's an ephemeral medium, unless you're there, you really don't, unless you're there to experience it firsthand, you don't experience the transformative power if there is such a thing. And um, so it had to be something else. It had to be our own curation of what that was. And uh, likewise, Klaus curates her. Mm. And you know, I think that the mark of any great artist is someone who recognizes uh, good advice and listens to it, like you know, she says, she considers David Blaine's proposal <laughs> of doing that ridiculous thing, and then she rejects it, ultimately, because her, her gallus sort of advises her and she listens to that advice. Um, those are all, that, that's something I, I experienced and witnessed, and that also helped sort of inform mm. the way we put it together. And, um, you know, when we showed her the rough cut, I think like a couple months before we found out about Sundance, she had 16 pages of notes, because we really took great license. We put music under her mm. documentation, and. Um, we're not presenting her documentation or any of her work in an academic way, mm. um, but really, in a, we were sort of glossing over it, but but just sort of elucidating certain concepts. And I think that shocked her because she's always used to controlling the way that mm -hmm. that stuff is displayed. And um, we just, at, so she gave us 16 pages of notes, all of which we rejected, we just ignored. And we just said, look, you've just got to trust us that you know it's going to come together and it's, it'll make sense. But it's not what you maybe envision for your for your story. And she did. And then when she saw it at Sundance, she really loved it. Mm -hmm. So, thankfully. Mm. No, I must admit the David Blaine incident was the only bit in the film that really kind of took me back that she would even consider that. I must admit. But I, I think that actually it serves a really important function in the film in showing that it really is. A, it is honest, you know, it's completely kind of honest. The other thing that surprised me is just how how kind of powerful yet warm she was. Because I remember, I think the first piece of hers I saw was Art Must Be Beautiful, Artists Must Be Beautiful, which is an old 70s piece, but I must have seen it in the late 80s or something. And um, always found her a very confrontational figure, but it isn't. And I, I think, of course, I mean, it'd be very interesting. We'll open it up for questions in a moment. But the whole idea of creating the charismatic space and how art, can a film do that as well as performance art? Is it performance art? Can, other, can a reproductive medium create that in a way that a real experience can create it? What, what do you think about that? Is that what you, was that one of your aims for the film? Yeah, for sure. I mean, mm. uh, that's kind of a lofty aim, and so I don't want to try to be egotistical about it, but I mean, certainly that was when we were thinking about, when I was thinking about how do you do this, part of it was um, that you had to, we had to heighten the experience using whatever film tools we could, so with the cinematography, the editing, or whatever, the artifice we were creating, somehow heighten that experience so it gave you some semblance of what we experienced. Mm -hmm. um, so it was the aim to try to, and, and, and odd, th an odd reaction has been that people at a lot of these festivals come up to me and they say afterwards, like, I felt like I was there. I don't know why that is, but I really felt, <laughs> and it's, I don't know why that is, but, you know, we, that was, that was our goal, you know, I, and I guess, I mean, it's, it's really amazing that um, on some level people are having that reaction um, because you're not there, clearly. I mean, she's not looking at you. You're not looking at the people that are looking at her. So I'm not exactly sure why that's working, but, you know, I'm glad that's happening and maybe, 
maybe it's just a testament to the power of what she actually did mm -hmm. and that it's sort of rubbing off in the film a little bit. But you know, there was a charged charismatic space mm -hmm. in that atrium, in that room. And uh, maybe there was just so much of it that it is coming through.